Hi, my name is Evan, and in this video, I'm going to give a little demonstration about how you might use some of the features of this panel to teach a more interactive lesson to an older audience, maybe someone like a high school student who's in a STEM class. So for this example, I'm going to be covering some cellular biology, for instance. And hopefully this just gives you a little bit of an idea of how this might work in a real classroom situation and get some experience using the tools that will help you in the everyday classroom. So to start with, I find that it's great to start off a lesson on a new topic with something that's really attention gramming and fun for students, a little bit more interesting than me just talking for a while. And of course you have a web browser built in here, so you can load up something like a Khan Academy video or another instructional video of your choice. And of course we're not going to go and watch this entire video, but once you're done with that and you've introduced the topic of cell biology, the topic for the day, you can switch over to something like the Note app and then you can delve into some of the more specific structures and functions that you want to talk about. So you can use an overview image like this. I really like how Note app allows you to import images that you can find either from your curriculum or on the internet. You can just download them directly to the panel. and. You can, of course, use the different annotation tools here to start marking up these diagrams. It's a really good way to get these high-resolution images that otherwise you might have to draw by hand if you weren't using something like this. And, of course, you can use the Pages feature here to load up different images in advance. So you can talk about different things and scroll between them without having to go and re-import things every time. So you can go organelle by organelle, or what I like to do is do more of a comparative study where you can bring students up or ask questions and have them point out differences between things like mitochondria and chloroplasts. That works just as well with bigger overview diagrams if you want to point out cell walls versus cell membranes, for instance. This is a great opportunity to get students involved with asking questions or maybe coming to the board and providing their own responses. So you'll see some arrows here that I've provided. Students can also add their own really easily with this shape tool. So they can just insert an arrow right there and then they can point to the exact structure that they want to discuss or that if you are giving more of a lecture situation, you can point things out very specifically. It's made really easy with these shapes that come pre-built in. Now, in addition to using these images that I've added to Note, of course you can also just draw your own diagrams. So, for example, if you're looking at a, something like a cell membrane, it's really easy to use all of the different shape and color tools here. You can go through and assign different colors to the stylus as well as your hand or a thicker or thinner end of the stylus. So if you're making colored diagrams that have multiple parts that you'd really like to highlight, it's really easy to just use something like that. And now I can go in and draw a different color really quickly and easily to complete my diagram. Now, of course, at some point, you're probably going to want to break out and go back to something like Chrome here to show a more detailed overview. Maybe an animation. There's plenty that are out there that'll give students a great idea of what things actually look like. Maybe the scale of these lipid bilayers, far more detail and effort than you could draw yourself. So that's, of course, an option as well. And let's get out of this and go back to the Note app. And if you have something that doesn't have any labels, if you find an unlabeled diagram, or even if you draw it your own, it's a great way to bring students more into the learning process by bringing them up to the board, asking students to identify their own structures, maybe giving a little quiz where students would actually have to write down structures that you're pointing to. So you can make use of a lot of the features of this board when it comes to something like scientific diagrams or animations that are really impossible to show in a more traditional classroom. As opposed to having every student on their own laptop, you can focus everyone's attention right here. 
and it makes for a great learning experience. I hope this video gave you a little overview of some of the potential uses of these boards in maybe a STEM high school classroom. If you have other questions about how to use it for a younger audience or how to use any of the software products that I was actually going through pretty quickly in this video, please see some of the other videos in this series.